Hi, this is Mr. Nueva, your guitar teacher for this video tutorial. For this video, our focus will be on simplified chords. Check it out. So what are the commonly used simplified chords? Or sometimes they are referring to it as the cowboy chords. These are the chords that every beginner should learn. So each component or the components of each chord can be seen on the first three frets of the fretboard. On the first fret, the second fret, then the third fret. So what are the chords? We have five major chords then three minor chords we have the chord G or the G major D C A and E major the three minor chords are the E minor the A minor then the D minor okay in making a simplified chord we have to follow a very simple rule and that is a one finger one string rule say for example we are going to, to make a, a G major chord so we are going to follow that rule one finger one string rule so your first finger should be pressing the fifth string of your guitar on the second fret then your second finger should be pressing the sixth string on the third fret then your ring finger should be pressing the second second string on the, the third fret also then your pinky on the third fret also pressing the first string so that is a G major chord sometimes they are using this form others are using this kind of form those are acceptable as long as you are producing happy sound which is a characteristic of a major sound then clear sound then it's okay so you can use this form this form or this form okay so the thing is that you should be following that rule because this is a simplified form so one finger one string don't let your finger touch any other strings. Say for example, your first finger, it shouldn't be touching the sixth string and then the fourth string. So it should be touching the, or you should be pressing the fifth string alone. The same thing, it should not touch the bar. Okay? So, put it at the middle of the fret space or the fret itself so first finger your second finger avoid touching the fifth string then your ring finger the same thing then your pinky so that is now the G major chord So how are you going to use these simplified chords? Okay, I will be giving you few chord combinations or chord sequences that you can practice. Then you have to practice chord transferring first, chord transferring, then apply chord or apply downstroke strumming. Okay, that is on how you are going to practice these simplified chords. Okay, so let's say we have here the G major, the G major chord. E minor chord, C major, then the D. So how are you going to practice that? Okay, first, you have to remember the rule. Okay, the first rule is apply one finger, one string rule. Okay, say for example your G. Another one is that don't let your palm, which is the palm of your left hand, touch the back of your neck. Okay, instead you have to use your thumb. You have to use your thumb. Again, don't let the palm touch the back of your neck. 
instead you have to use your thumb okay in order for you to press the strings properly okay to create pressure in doing that you will be able to make the sound of the strings clear okay that is one of the way in order for you to create a clear sound okay so two rules one finger one string rule then don't let your palm touch the back of your neck instead use your thumb difficulties in playing guitar is on how you are going to form your chords okay next one is on how you are going to transfer from your first chord going to the next and then to the next and then to the next so you have to find a way to make it easy for you or easier for you to transfer from one from one chord going to the next okay so i have an idea here i will be uh, teaching teaching you okay so say for example you have here the g major chord which is this one so say for example the next chord is your e minor so the composition of this e minor is that the first finger should be touching the fifth string then the second finger should be touching the fourth string on the second fret so right here so all i have to do is to lift my my second finger my third finger then my pinky release then transfer my second finger to the fourth string on the second fret okay i'll do it slowly from G then to E minor and you see that I am not moving my first finger at all okay G to E minor that's how I do it okay so say for example the next chord after E is C so all I have to do is to lift my first finger then retain my second finger okay then put it on put my first finger on the second string on the first fret then my ring finger or third finger on the fifth string on the third fret so that's now my c again notice on how i transfer my chord from e minor to c e minor then c e minor then C okay I hope it's clear okay say for example the next chord is your D major chord so you don't have a choice you have to lift all your fingers then form your D major chord here okay so if the next chord is G you'll find it easy okay from D to G say for example next thing to do is to lift my first and second finger my third finger will be retained then position the G4 okay that is now my G again from D then G I am not lifting my third finger again from D to G so you have to find a way Okay, a way in order for you to make it easier transferring from one chord going to the next so next thing to do is to apply your downstroke strumming okay so you will you will practice first your downstroke using downstrokes okay four times for each chord say for example one two three four okay Let's say the G chord. One, two, three, four. Okay. Now the objective is to make the the, the sound clear. Okay. You will not be able to do that if you are not going to press your strings as hard as you can. Again, remember the first rule: one finger, one string. Then don't let your palm touch the back of your neck. Instead, use your thumb. Okay. That is the best way in order for you to press the strings properly. Okay?
i press it as hard as you can then apply downstroke strumming. One, two, three, four. Okay? You can do it slowly. That is the best thing to do. Do it slowly. Okay? Next is to transfer from G chord to the E minor chord. Okay? Now that is not the problem. Okay? So, if I'm going to do it in a pace like this, at speed like this, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. You'll notice that I can do it with ease, okay? Because I've done doing that a thousand times, okay? But for learners, you have to practice it slowly, okay? Start from G, one, two, three, four, transfer one, two, three, four, okay? So the gap between one, two, then two to three, three to four, then four to one should be equal. That is the best thing to practice. Okay? One to two, two to three, three to four, then four to one. The spaces between the numbers should be equal. The timing. Okay, it should be equal. Okay, again. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Again. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. If you cannot do that at that pace, do it slower. Okay, say for example. One, two, Three, four, transfer one, two, three, four. Don't rush things, okay? You have to do it slowly, okay? Then remember the rules, okay? Press the strings as hard as you can. You have to make the strings ring clearly, okay? So let's say I'll be using the, the G chord, the E minor chord, the C major chord, then the D major chord. Okay, here's my tempo. One, two, three, four. 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 Okay? Remember the rules. Then the gap each counting. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1. 4 to 1 should have the same gap as 1 to 2. 2 to 3 and then 3 to 4.
that's it for today's video. Remember one thing. Practice. Okay? So you have to do it slowly. Okay? After practicing, next thing to do is to practice again. Okay? That's it for today. See you in my next video. Thank you.